Hello everybody, this is Santa, and today we're going to be reviewing a, 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 a movie. Yeah, that does exactly. Santa, what are you doing, pal? It's not Christmas yet. You're out of, you're out of season, bro. Just get out of here. Okay, guys, I don't know what that was. But anyway, we are going to be talking, doing our second movie review, the movie name, Two by Two, God's Little Creatures. What we're going to talk about the movie, is it better than the name or is it just as boring? So this movie was released in 2015 by a group called Entertainment One Film, and this movie has the voice, a well-known voice, of Amy Grant. So let's talk about this movie, about the different parts of it, and whether it's something that we should check out or not. I know how you feel, Finny, but it's my job to keep you safe. So at the beginning of the movie, we are introduced to a species of creature that we've never seen before in this world called Nestrians. So Nestrians are these weird, hairy creatures that have bright colors and have trunks like elephants and a tail kind of like a platypus. The thing about Nestrians is they move around all the time. The two Nestrians are a father named Dave and a son named Finny. One day, Dave is told that all the animals in the world are required to come to a meeting. Finny thinks that his dad is just looking for an excuse to move again because they move all the time, but they do find out that all the animals actually are having a meeting. Ah, I knew it! Dad, everybody's staring. So basically, this meeting of all the animals is led by this super powerful, muscly lion who tells them that a flood is getting ready to overtake the whole earth, but a kind human named Noah is building an ark so they don't drown. So yes, this is a story of Noah's ark, but very, very, very different. Catch is this. The animals, for them to be on the ark, their name has to be on Noah's list. Hello, everybody. This is Noah. And I put the lion in charge of my ark. You have to be on the list that I wrote, or you can't board the ark. I'm wearing this wig backwards. But the problem is this. The Nestrians aren't on the list. Dave and Finny are so scared. But Dave has an idea. There's another species that Finny took interest in that was boarding the ark called Grimps. So Dave's idea is what if he disguises himself as a Grimp and boards with them? Now, forget the fact that there's only supposed to be two Grimps and now there are, are four of them. I, I guess the ape that was letting the animals board is just not the smartest animal. So anyway, he tries out his idea that disguises themselves as Grimps and the dumb old ape doesn't even notice the difference so he lets them all on the Grimps are infuriated they try to tell them that they're not actually Grimps but the animals make sure they all get into the ark so Dave and Finny are so happy this isn't my husband you're not the only ones who want to board but I another word and you're off yo look we all know that Grimp means grump but why don't you just calm down already so anyway, like I said, both the Grimps are infuriated and the daughter Grimp decides to go on top of the Ark and explore a little bit. So Fanny follows along even though her mother has trained her to be a loner and to be very angry basically about everything. They end up on the scaffolding next to the Ark thinking they're on the Ark and when the floodwaters come, they end up breaking down the scaffolding, the boat floats away and Finny and the daughter Grimp are both stuck on the scaffolding. So they're almost to the point of drowning with all the scaffolding breaking until at the last moment two bats catch them but with the intent of eating them. So they end up escaping and they get away onto dry ground but the water is rapidly rising and they decide to camp for the night. That's such a beautiful shelter. Oh my goodness, you are an engineering genius. So when the morning comes, the Grim finds out that Benny has built a boat. They can sail and catch up with the Ark. Look, brother, we're gonna be all right. We got a boat. We're gonna be fine. Oh, yes. But the boat ends up blowing away because they're not holding on to it. So the Grimp is infuriated because once again they have no boat or anything and the water is continuing to rise. They run into this big weird creature called Obesi. So Obesi looks kind of like a dry slug. That's the best way that I can describe him. And he has some parasite that has attached himself to him and is convinced that Obesi is his best friend in the world. He won't get off. The name's Stay Put. I'm Obesi's best friend. You are so annoying. <laughs> we joke like this all the time. 
So they decide to let Obesity and the Parasite join them even though the grip is sure that they're just going to slow them down. So they keep going forward, but the bats are not done yet. They're hungry and they want Nestrian and Grimp meat. So, they have a little trap for them. So further up along the way, there is a ravine where there's nowhere to cross, so the bat build a bridge for them. Why are the bats building a bridge for them? It's because they build their bridge on secure so that when the animals walk over it, it will break and then they will fall straight down to where the bats have set up a table for a candlelight dinner. They go over the bridge and it does break and they fall, but for some reason, something they built on obesity, something to give them some shade, turns obesity into a gliding creature and he ends up gliding through the ravine and then back onto the ground. Very interesting. So after all of this, the grip, you know, she says, you know, I've had enough. You know, I've had enough. I'm done. I'm done. Done. So I'm gonna leave you guys and I'm gonna go my own way and do my own thing. So the grip goes along by herself and ends up falling off of a cliff. She grabs onto something and is about to fall when Obesity comes along and sticks out his tongue to grab her. He sticks out his tongue. He's grabbing a grip with his tongue. How does that make sense? Why? Well, you grab something with your tongue. The Grimp is so sorry for the way she's acted and she decides once and for all to just be their friend and be on their side. So they go on from there, into some caverns, spend the night, but the problem is when the morning comes, the caverns flood. Really? So they end up getting washed down the tunnels, and at the end of the tunnel, they almost get washed out into the ocean, but Obesity gets stuck inside the tunnel and works as a plug to keep the water from blowing them away. Now, the thing about Obesity is, if you tickle his nose, he will sneeze. And so they end up accidentally tickling Obesity's nose, so he sneezes into, like, the other side of, like, the mountainous area. I mean, how does all this make sense, yo? After that, the water knocks him out of the tunnel, and he falls into the ocean beneath, and they're devastated. They don't want to say goodbye to Obesity, but they know they have to go on. They knew that's what Obesity would want them to do. So they go on to the top of the mountain. Now, while all this is happening at the same time on the art, in a very amusing way, the staff finds out that Dave is not a Grim. So they end up locking him and the Mother Grim away inside of a jail cell, and they have to figure out a way to escape and get to the captain and tell him to turn the ship around. So they escape the cell that they're in and get to the captain, and Dave tries talking to him. Doesn't work. The captain is not a reasonable lie. He's just a jerk lie. So the Grim decides to take matters into her own hands and knocks the captain out and they take control of the steering wheel and turn the arc around. They go and find where their two children are located. Now what happened was the children were on this icy mountaintop and the water basically covered everything else except for a piece of ice that they were floating on. So the Grim gets safely back on the arc but the arc runs into the ice and Benny accidentally falls into the water and can't get out. So Dave jumps in to save him, but when he reaches him, it's too late, and, he, and he's drowned. No, and he's drowned. Or, or has he? <laughs> Dad, I can't breathe. Dave. Dave. I know. Da hey, We're Dave, right he's alive. You're, you're talking. They end up finding that Nestrians are actually water creatures that can breathe underwater and they never knew it. It's like they finally found their true home. But in one final adventure, the bats come for the children one more time and try to eat them. Finny goes underwater to lure them away and they chase him down and almost catch him. But at the last moment, Obesity comes back and ends up taking them out. And by the way, Ob Obesity is a whale. Basically, in this movie, you find out half the creatures that were afraid of the water end up being water creatures? I mean, I, yo, how is a whale supposed to survive above water? A lot of this movie does not make the most sense. But anyway, this movie is full of messages about the importance of family, about teamwork, and about the importance of forgiving people, even when they treat you wrong. So my overall thoughts is I found this a highly creative, very enjoyable, and extremely colorful movie. Now you could tell they didn't have the budget of like a Pixar movie or anything like that. I feel like, again, it's a very visually good movie. The animation is extremely well done. Now comes to the part of the video where we talk about all the bad stuff. Some generic things. There is going to be some mild peril inside of this movie. One part of the movie, one of the bats says, heck, 
which is basically a euphemism for the H word. And then another part of the movie is sounds like one of the grunts uses the word Don. That's also a euphemism for the D word. And then a couple other elements. There was a part of the movie where the Grim was looking through the window into the house that Finney had built, and it showed like his silhouette like washing up inside of there and drying up. Of course, you gotta consider that Dave and the Grim were beating up the captain and knocking him out. Another thing is that Dave did lie to his son Finney at first and tell him that they were on the Ark when they weren't, so he was being kind of dishonest about that. One of my biggest problems with this movie is it presents an inaccurate view of how the Ark actually worked with the animals, because the Bible says most species of animals, there were two of each. In this movie, Dave and Finney were both males, and the Bible says one male and one female, and the Grimps were both females. Overall, that's my thoughts, guys. I'm curious to see what you guys think, and I am going to go ahead and Finish this beautiful work of art video now!